consider everything that went into this game, a ban down as well. They were able to come out of picks and bans with what they wanted completely in hand, and then having the first two kills against them in the beginning of the game. Double if why don't you just take us off? Start us off. Oh, there's just so much to talk about in this game. Okay, so first, if you can't play Corky and you're not going to play a counter to Corky because Ezreal doesn't deal well at all, then you need to ban it. Like, they banned Ari, Shen, Leona. You don't need to ban Leona or Shen. You they even showed that they're willing to run Singed into Shen in the first two games that they played, so why would they ban it against Fnatic? Anyways, uh, picks and bans aside, I just saw, like, multiple mistakes. Imp and Dade especially just kept getting picked off unnecessarily. They didn't need to play aggressively. All they have to do is snowball their fiddlesticks Lissandra combo against double assassins, and eventually in the mid game when they get Zonyas, it's just so impossible for double assassin to deal with that combo. I just don't know why they would try to push their advantage so much. But that said, I think you have to give a lot of credit to Fnatic though for setting up those picks and playing that way after they did get behind early because they saw the comp coming out of Ozone. If, if we're talking about Lissandra and fiddlesticks here, that. Those targeted disables, that silence, if you come in with both Zed and Kassadin mm -hmm. at the same time, could have been absolutely devastating in the late game. And so they said, hey, we're behind. We know we have to close this out quickly if we're going to get an advantage. So they set up those famous Fnatish, Fnatica brush picks, and they made it work. They turned it around, yeah. and they did a very good job at it. Exactly, and that's the, the type of play style I think is actually superior in League of Legends compared to Ozone, who are very, very strong, and they're very, very smart, but they're reserved. They're a pretty reserved team who play by the book, whereas teams like Fnatic and OMG, as long as they don't make the wrong calls, make aggressive calls. They picked off uh, the support because he went to ward over a wall and went for a max range grasping roots. That's already... But they had already lost a bit of the control of the game, though. While they play really reserved, they play the game really well if they don't make any mistakes. They got ahead 2-0, but then Dare overextended twice in top lane. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually got unlucky because he skilled his Q twice uh, in the earlier skirmish, in which he actually got the 2-0. And he had no escape, overextended, got rooted out of a brush, and then got killed again. And that actually allowed... Because you have to remember, yes, he got caught warding in the middle of the game, but that was top lane roaming to mid, to kill mid, the mid laners there and they actually lane swap. That would have never happened if, if there had been more pressure uh, out of the 2 0 advantage they had. So it goes a little bit both ways, but I do like the way Fnatic plays when behind. It really shows how much mental agility they have, how comfortable they are. Even look at the mid game. Soaz had a ward on Fiddlesticks at the, at the side and he just said, Yeah, normally a player would back off, but Soaz, nah. He's like, Okay, I'm going to bait the, the surprise party Fiddlesticks and then I'm just going to jump out and I will show you that I knew you were there and then I baited you and it just, <laughs> they got into the heads of the enemy. Then Mani, you know, I want to pose a question. Knowing Ozone so well from being in Korea, is it you know, like them to kind of falter into positions like this? We kind of saw a, a few of the mind games try wow. to come out with the Ezreal pick, but then last picking that top lane. It, where they, are they falling into this? They, no, I, I think they had a good composition. They just ended up getting that early edge and then playing out the early game poorly compared to Fnatic who set up some beautiful picks. But if you look at it, they knew Zed was going to be first picked. It was obvious with okay. the bands that they had. And they, their idea was to counter pick with Lissandra. And they were trying, I think it was a smart idea against how Fnatic plays to say, we can deal with your assassins. Like these, they were great picks. Like they had a great team composition so far behind that it ended up not mattering. And Fnatic used the, the brush control to the utmost, not only in that top lane against Dade, but also uh, to pick off Imp and, and Mata in the, uh, by blue buff as well. So. You, got, you really got to hand it to Fnatic. They play beautifully, so. Yeah, Fiddlesticks and, and Lissana work really well against these mobile assassins, but it, it actually gets a little worse when there's two of them because it's really hard. Soaz, as well as Pekka, are really good at dancing at the edge of a fight, especially ex he will, he will, Yes, he can get caught by fear, and he can get caught by real sound royalty, but he will just never get in range for that. And Fnatic did that so beautifully. They just set it up perfect traps for, uh, for Ozone. Like, remember the fight at Dragon? Uh, they give Ozone Dragon, yeah, they tease a little bit, let them leave, and it, Ozone thinks they're safe, and then suddenly behind them is Soaz waiting in a brush, and they just get blown up. Yeah, and that's actually another thing that I like from Fnatic, is uh, when I think about the team, it, it's Peke, obviously, is someone a lot of people look at, but also Soaz has so much room to make plays, and, and we saw multiple, multiple of them in this game, and as soon as they said, okay, well, Peke, you're on casting, but Soaz, you've got Zed, another individual playmaker, they can both go by themselves and be their incredible players there. Remember, Soaz won the 1v1 competition for top laners in All-Star game. He's 
legitimately one of the best top laners in the world, and he gets, when he's not playing Yorick, he gets the freedom to go make plays and make a bunch of stuff happen, which happened here. And still, I think the bot lane was actually MVP this game. Oh, yeah. Like, actually, I was about to say, Pushy make, made me eat my words. He was pretty substantial game. He had pretty substantial game impact this game. Uh, his, he had started the game off 4-0 and on Corky, partially due to Dada's mistakes. 4-1. Or 4-1. And and but also, he, he just played a very solid game, and, and so did, like... Zyra had amazing grasping roots the entire game. They just they had a really solid game all around. Everyone played well. Their synergy just yeah they they, they got killed early in a skirmish and they said well that's too bad it happens. Wait in the bush, get a kill, kill Dade again. Init immediately realized that that wasn't enough right. for Fnatic to get back in the game. Only top lane winning wasn't enough. They had to stop Pekka from being shut down. So they rolled it mid, got another pick off, put Pekka in top lane. Pekka uses teleport to get that farm. Yep. And he's snowballed into the game. Into the game and we've seen the ban on Cassidy. This is his first game being picked, with, picked, which makes him the 48th champion that we've seen now within Worlds. What is it like for a team to go against Fnatic when now there are multiple targets on Pushu, on Soaz, now that's played Zed, which we kind of saw on Cassidy? How do you defend against that or even go into champion select? Yeah, you really you don't get to. And this is something we saw at the very beginning of the tournament was Cassidy bans. And then finally someone says, you know what, we don't really need to have been casted in Dewey. Yes, you do. You 2 v one against uh, Peke, right? You shut him down, he had very little minion kills. He couldn't roam to that top lane and turn around the kill. Then he burned his first teleport to soak up experience in the top lane when Dade was pushing. So he's sitting there doing nothing but waiting to stack up with Aroa, and then shows up to a team fight, gets a or belated quadra kill. Yeah, gets another one afterwards. <laughs> that's a team fight somebody else set up, though. If you sure, sure, sure. But Kassadin only scales into the game if your team allows you to scale into it. You can show Actually, Ozon did a good job of shutting him down. The other lanes just go behind. And I just kind of want to draw a comparison between Expeke and Faker, who are v both very like high playmakers. Well, Expeke makes his plays generally with TP, but they both have insanely big champion pools that you can't really ban out. And they're both just incredibly solid players. Obviously, they're not going to ever face each other until semifinals if they both make it, potentially. But they're just so good, and they're so versatile. And looking at their composition, we talked a little bit about how high risk, high reward it was. If you're not able to get early or ahead early with a pick composition like that, you kind of get torn apart, Prepo. Well, they didn't get. But yeah, if you don't get a <laughs> yeah, if you don't if you don't bounce back from the initial uh, setback, yeah, then you, it's going it's going to get really hard. Um, yeah, you have to play for picks, and that's what they did. Like, Fnatic's really good at that, though. It's so scary to play against them. I really liked some of the movements they had over, over the map. I, I don't know if, if, if I was behind, I would have actually seen those paths they had to take, because they, they realized, even if they were getting control over one lane again, they realized that was enough. They, they rotated into mid lane, snowballed it there, keep, keep getting a farm on Peke, and then they had really good fights. So the big fight at 18 minutes, we don't have a replay of it, but we were kind of watching that off. What were, what were the thoughts there? They obviously invaded the jungle, and then we saw Ozone quickly going for the dragon that kind of even set them farther back. Monty, if you want to talk to that a little bit. I'm trying to remember. This was the top lane jungle yep. fight. Um, ooh, hard to do without a replay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they did file in a little bit one, one by one right there, and I'm trying to remember, but I think Fnatic used the lizard brush really well yeah. to deny a lot of damage. It's kind of that I think I can mentality. You can yeah. help your teammate out. I, I can help you. No, we're good, both going to die. Maybe a third one can help us out, and it looks yeah. like... In the jungle, it's really nice to fight with double mobile assassins, though, because unless you have full vision with wards, they can constantly jump over walls, come in and out, right. and you see that, like, Pekka draws that. Pekka is really good. That's his signature playstyle at drawing aggro, going out of the fight and getting back in. He will almost always burn his flash yeah. going out. And Pekka is really good at using target CC. Right. Like Lissandra ultis, usually they leave you in place. You can see Pekka every game just pour it out and still get Lissandra ulti where he ends up because he reads the game so well. He knows exactly when to go in and out. Right. And I think a lot of these fights uh, when Ozone gets blindsided right. is in part due to Mata underperforming a little bit because I generally see him in, you know, Champions, he has amazing map control. He has amazing vision around. He, his team never gets flanked. Right. And then I see multiple times Zed will flank his team, Cassidy will flank his team this game. And especially in these crucial turning point fights, that you can't afford to get flanked or else you're going to lose. Right on. All right, guys. So moving on a bit, let's check out the groupie standings heading into our last game of the day. All of you are awesome for sticking with us and the fans as well.